My name is Ricky Leo. I'm president of the Chinese Historical Society of Southern California. And uh, I would also like to uh, acknowledge uh, Bob Lee and the China, China Society of Southern California for co-sponsoring this program. Uh, if you're new to the Historical Society, we were established in 1975, and we are uh, interested in promoting the, the his, history of the Chinese and Chinese Americans in Southern California. If you're interested in joining, we would love to have you. Or if you're a member and haven't renewed your membership, uh, we would encourage you to do that. Your, your membership enables us to provide these programs, uh, our newsletter and our research free of charge. And uh, I would now like to introduce Cliff Ueda, who is going to uh, introduce panelists for tonight's program. Cliff? Thank you, Ricky. And it's nice to be here. We appreciate the opportunity to speak all, to all of you and uh, welcome. So without further ado, I'm just going to introduce the panelists, starting with Greg Fong. Greg Fong, wave your hand, say hello. Hello, thanks Hi, for joining us. Greg joined the Corps in 1962 and marched until 1966 as a drum major while attending Cal State LA. After his time as an active member, Greg served as an instructor from 1967 to 1970. He subsequently attended the USC School of Pharmacy and graduated in 1974. In later years, Greg headed up reunion committees and became the de facto lead for the Corps Legacy Community. For the Legacy Committee. Thanks, Greg. Uh, next up is uh, Robert Bob Lee. Say hello, Bob. Hey. Thank you. Robert Bob Lee, also known as Youngie. Bob was born and raised in Chinatown. Bob was a charter member of the Chung Hua Drum Corps and played the snare drum. Like many founding members, he eventually became an instructor. He also served as the coordinator between teaching staff management and the very active parents auxiliary. Bob attended local schools and later graduated from Cal State LA with a business degree. His life's work included leading tour groups throughout China and subsequently studying there. Working as a licensed real estate broker, then opening his own office and entering the civil service for a 25 year career to date as a labor market information consultant. Thanks, Bob. Don, Don Kwan, say hello and wave your hand. Thanks, Don. Don first met Bill Lee in the Los Angeles Police Department Boys Band, where both played snare drums. He joined Bill's newly formed Chung Hua Drum Corps as a charter member and played the soprano horn from 1954 to 1960. After leaving the Corps, Don attended UCLA and graduated with an engineering degree. He worked at Boeing beginning in 1962 until he retired in 2009. Don joined the Corps' Legacy Committee in 2013 to help create the exhibit. Thanks, Don. Next yeah. up, next up is Corey Mark. Say hello and wave to the people, Corey. Hello. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Corey was a member from 1967 to 1972. The development of lifelong friendships, the challenge of mastering a musical instrument, and proudly he representing how to get on his community Zoom inspired him right. to I'll, continue I'll his involvement in the musical see. arts, okay, supplementing his career in biotechnology industry. Throughout his adult life, he has performed with Fife and Drum Corps, Tycho Groups, Wind Symphonies, various senior and all-age Drum Corps. Now retired, he currently resides in the greater Houston, Texas area. Next up is Janice Lee Manis. Say hello, Janice. Wave your hand. All right. Janice began her core experience in 1967 as a mascot who followed the 
color guard captain because she was too small for a uniform or an instrument. Later, she became a member of the color guard flag line and learned the true meaning of teamwork. She said the course positively impacted her life from the sense of family to her self-confidence, determination, discipline, drive, sense of accomplishment, and commitment to stay fit and active. Janice considers her friends from the Corps to be family. She recently retired from the school district, having worked in assessment and technology for over 20 years. Janice's parents, Mr. Tommy Lee and June Lee, were among those extremely active in the parents' auxiliary. They served on the board as chairpersons for various fundraisers and chefs and chaperones for camps, parades, activities, and tours. Thanks, Janice. Jeff Ding. Hi, everybody. Hello, Jeff. Jeff was a member from 1974 to 1977. He played, he played the drums then and still enjoys playing the drums now. Marching with the Corps was the highlight of his childhood. He learned discipline, hard work, perseverance, teamwork, and traveled parts of the world competing against some of the best <clears throat> Corps around. For Jeff, the most meaningful part was making friendships that have lasted a lifetime including the one with his first drum instructor, Willie Polichek. Jeff graduated from UCLA with an economics degree. He worked for Allstate, established his own agency, and recently retired from a 36-year career in the insurance industry. His retirement activities include playing drums in his band, Elemental Funk, at various community events and dances in Orange County and the South Bay. So there we have it. Those are our panelists. My name is Cliff Ueda. And so without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Eugene. Good evening, everyone. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, we have some stories to hear. And uh, I hope that we, we can gain some insights about life in Chinatown and life in the community and life with family. Uh, so I think what I'll do is start through my uh, my list here and, and maybe I, we'll just quickly you know go through because we don't really have a lot of time there are, uh, uh, there are quite a number of people to hear from but maybe what we'll the do is just on. Speakers on. maybe we'll just have some some uh, uh, a few questions I'll, I'll, I'll go through with you and then we'll, we'll then uh, here summarize to, like, uh, overall chat to them. Um, maybe we start with Greg. Uh, do I see Greg? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So you were a drum major. What was the role of the drum major and how did, you know, did you even have a clue of, as to what a drum major could do? And then how did that uh, affect your, you as a, uh, uh, as a person? Well, when we first started, when I first started with the core, I was a, uh, I came in a, in as a band drum major in high school, and I was asked to be drum major of the core. Um, I think they had, um, I think Carolyn uh, Kwan was a drum major before, and they wanted a change, and I said okay. I was uh, always asked uh, to join the core by a close friend of mine, Richard Kwan. And I finally succumbed to his suggestions and uh, joined the Corps. Uh, so I kind of knew what was going on, but uh, um, it was uh, it was an experience. It was different. Um, drum Corps and band are completely different animals. And uh, did, did you first wear time a I different left... uniform? Did, did uh, wear... a, a slight alteration. I think I had a uh, dark blue blouse. And uh, white pants, cummerbund, where the core was in a white blouse, dark pants. So kind of uh, opposite. So yeah, I had a different uniform. Okay. And what school were you at at the time when you joined? I was a drum major at Dorsey High School. At Dorsey, okay. Yeah. I'm going to 
ask everybody what school you went to, because I think that a lot of folks in the audience, uh, I, I can see one on the list here who was at Dorsey. I'm talking about you, Donna, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, and tell me, you know, how, how, so how did that affect your life? What, what kinds of things that did you, did it, uh, I guess you were already a, 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 a functioning as a drum major. And by the way, for everybody, uh, I'm going to give each of you, we're just going to talk about three minutes or so. And then uh, because of, we have so many people here. So uh, why don't we just uh, maybe, uh, this is my final question, uh, Greg. So. Do you want to repeat the question, Gene? Oh, yes. Uh, so how um, how did that affect, how, how did just being a drum major or being involved with the core, how did that affect your life? Uh, it, it was, for me, it was an opportunity to do something with uh, the Chinese community. Um, I really uh, didn't go to Chinese school and uh, I wanted to find out what it was like to be with people that shared the same interest and music was the interest. Um, and I wanted to share that with others and I wanted to meet other Chinese kids. So I mean, growing up in Crenshaw District, it was pretty, it was pretty diversified. Um, and I, it was a feeling of uh, self uh, when I joined the Corps. That sounds, sounds good. Let me move on, uh, quickly move on to some of the others, and then we'll kind of circle back uh, with some general questions. Uh, to Robert Lee or Bob Lee or Youngie, uh, uh maybe the same questions uh first of all what instrument did you play and uh well actually i know that uh, cliff already mentioned that but uh how what was how what was your your role how did you grow as a person as a result of being involved uh, and maybe talk about any special moments that you remember sure thank you so much <laughs> I was one of the uh, original 25 or so members of the, at that time it was called Chonghua Drum and Mule Corps. Um, let me start a little bit further back. Um, my father was born and raised in LA Chinatown. My father was a paper son. So um, he had his house about a block away from the Chunghua Chinese School, and that's where my brother and I attended. And I think uh, my brother John was one, uh, one that got in contact with Bill Lee, and I think Don Kwan will, could tell you more about it. But um, we were the original band. I, I really think it was a minor miracle that we survived because we had very oh. few instruments, no transportation. If we had to go to an event, we chip in for gas, carpool, throw the instruments into our trunk, and arrive. So we were. It was really a seat of the pants. Uh, operation at that time. Um, Youngie, when you said only a few instruments, how many people were in the group at, approximately? Uh, originally, about 25. 25. And they're all mostly from the Chinese school because that's where it originally got uh, the instruments. And, and what um, school were you going to at the time? At that time, I was 12 years old. Uh, I was going to middle school. Yeah, Nightingale. Okay. Um, junior high school. 
and subsequently to Belmont and then Cal State LA. Um, so, so that sounds like a, a relatively young, my perception of, of the- uh, Yeah, I was were you probably the one of the youngest ones there. And I, Bill Lee, the founder was really a kind of an inspiring guy. He, his parents had the Dragon Pearl restaurant in Highland Park. And Bill would have uh, taco parties in the house above, on the hill above the Dragon Pearl. And, you know, to us being that young, it was really cool. So, um, I have a matchbook for the Dragon Pearl restaurant. Okay. That's, that's I don't have knowledge it. of that. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so anyway, um, like I just was telling you, when we started, I had to divide my time between going to my father's restaurant way out in the sticks in a place called Sherman Oaks before the Hollywood Freeway was built. So uh, and the name that's of that where restaurant? I, I'm sorry? What was, the, what was the name of that restaurant? Chungking Inn. Chungking Inn. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you said it before. I just didn't. <laughs> okay. So it was, uh, like I said, my father was a paper son. He came in as a HOM, H-O-M. And when he became naturalized, uh, changed it back to Lee. So I think I was pretty typical of that generation. And the impact the core had on me was, you know, I made really lifelong friends. Um, last month or so ago, um, I invited Victor Moy, one of the instructors, and we went out to a restaurant and to celebrate our 70 years of friendship. So that gives you an idea of how friends really over a span of time, you know, we really became long, uh, long friends, Life, long time lifelong friends. friends. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, I, I think it's just wonderful. I mean, just seeing all the faces here, I mean, just tells me something already. And um, actually, uh, hopefully all of you can stay through the end because uh, you'll see a short uh, PowerPoint clip showing people working together after, what, 50 or 60 years? So uh, we, we're all still standing. Um, anyway, let me move on to the next person. Uh, how about Janice? Uh, I'll ask some of the, the same questions. Uh, first of all, what did you play and or what was your role? And then um, how, how did being involved help you as a person? Uh, did your family help? Uh, did uh, you get a chance to travel? You know, what kind of places did you go to that you didn't see before? Um, that kind of thing. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what school did you go to at the time that you joined or how old were you when you joined? Hi. Um, yeah, my name is Janice and I was actually in the choir. I joined when I was eight years old. So I was actually the youngest at that time. Um, they didn't have a uniform that would fit me. So I had a, a unique uniform that was different color than anybody else. And like I said, uh, Clifford said in the intro, I actually was kind of a mascot and marched alongside Karen was our color guard captain at the time. So I would just follow her around and march right with her. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, what was the other question oh. you were asking? Well, what, what school were you at, at, at the time? Um, I was actually in, um, we lived in East Los Angeles. So I went to Multnomah Elementary School and then on to El Sereno Junior High School. And then I graduated from Woodrow Wilson High School. 
It was all LA Unified uh, School Districts. And I was a color, I was a, well, I started, you know, learning the basics because I was too small to really um, carry an instrument or anything. So I learned the basics in marching and so on. Um, and then I became a flag, a color guard. So I marched in the, the, we had actually a mini guard and then I went on to the B guard and then of course into the A guard. And um, I pretty much for all the 11 years I was in Drum Corps, I was in the color guard in the flag line. Um, really enjoyed it, made lots of really good friends. Um, it was, you know, of course the flag line is, is a pretty good size um, line. And, you know, it was learning a lot of teamwork we had, you know, there was always a change out and we had new people every year. So it was, you know, a lot of learning and learning to teach other people and work with them. Yep. That, which that actually carried into my work life too, because, you know, you really learn how to work with other people and teach and, you know, so on. So I really did enjoy that. Um, I think one of the things that I really, you know, thinking about when we marched, um, the competition that we did, learning the drills that we did, that that sense of going onto the field or, you know, in Winter Guard, it was in a gymnasium. So you were right there with the audience. And just that feeling, that exhilaration of, being in the competition, um, being on the field with a hundred people and connecting with them, doing your drill, that was a real thrill. I mean, that something, a sense that you don't forget. <laughs> so, so give us a, an idea of the size. You, you just told me there was a hundred people. So um, you mentioned a, a B guard and a, a, I guess were there different levels who marched in different events, or did you all come onto the field, maybe uh, following each other? How we had um, for the full drum corps, which is the drum line, the horn line, the color guard, which included flags, uh, rifle line, saber line. I mean, I believe at one point we had about 150 members and on the field at the same time. And during our field season, which was usually summertime, that would, um, it would last, I mean, it, we would go to Drum Corps International and you know, you were asking about travel. So we would have camps to practice our drill. And then we would go on tour and compete against other drum corps. Um, we went to Portland, Oregon, we went to, um, oh gee, I can't remember, <laughs> all the different uh, places that we traveled to for competition. I'll, I'll ask some of the others about other places they, mm -hmm. they went to. Uh, and then, so uh, being the youngest then, how long did you stay? I was in core for 11 years. Oh, until you, after high school? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then unfortunately, it, uh, CORE disbanded in 1977. I graduated high school in 1976. So yeah, it was, it was very unfortunate when it disbanded, but there was um, just the lifelong friends that I think all of us made is, I mean, I think even some, I've talked to some of my closest friends just preparing for this to talk about, you know, how the core has impacted us. And I think even, I mean, the, the common thread, even Greg was saying, and Youngie was saying, you know, it has been the lifelong friends that we've made and, you know, continue to. And I mean, I truly feel that all of my drum corps friends are my family too. Yeah. And, and speaking of family, and I want to give time to the others too, but, um, I think, uh, as I recall, uh, 
previously, your family was particularly involved, right? And yes, my parents. Yes, my parents were in the um, parents auxiliary. Um, my dad was at one time president of the parents auxiliary. My mom was always very active in, um, I mean, they both did uh, chaperoning um, when we had trips, any of the camps, the trips, they did um, uh, chaperoning that the parents, I mean, the amount of work that they put into organizing events for us, um, keeping track of the budget, uh, planning logistics for us. Um, even when we went on tours and trips, they would contact the uh, Chinese communities and they would actually plan. We would go and perform for some of the other communities and they would in turn um, make meals for us and we would get together with them and visit. So it was, it was a lot of community work too. And, and everybody else, bear with me, but I, I have one more question and I'm going to Sorry. <laughs> ask that. No, no, it's me. Uh, but uh, you mentioned uh, uh, living in East LA, actually, because you went yes. to school there, which I would guess was not a majority Asian or Chinese community. And you probably had very few classmates, I, I'm going to guess. So how did then going to Chinatown or getting involved with the group, did you then become more Chinese as a result? Well, definitely connected with my uh, Asian <laughs> identity or cultural identity because um, yes, right. I was in, we lived in a, a very Latino, Hispanic community. And um, I don't know, you know, I was thinking about it and it seemed that I remember my mom, my parents knew a lot of the other parents that were in drum corps. And it seemed like they were, they grew up um, in their generation. They lived near Chinatown. Okay. And as they had families, it seemed that they moved out into other communities. But then with Drum Corps, they came kind of came back together, you know, for their children and their families. And um, I don't I just remember my mom talking so much about the different parents that were in Drum Corps that she knew when they were kids. Okay. You know? Well, no, so I, I think it sounds great. It sounds like it was a way that people uh, found or, or reunited or reestablished community. Right. Let me, on, let me move on to, and I don't mean to cut you off, but uh, no, that's I want to give others some time here. Uh, Thank Corey, you. Corey, uh, we'll put you on the spot. Maybe you can talk a little bit about your early experience. What were you involved with? What did you play? Uh, and some memorable experiences. Uh, just talk a little bit. Okay, well, um, I joined in 1967, actually. Uh, my mother uh, told me and my older brother, Brad, that uh, she's going to take us to drum corps rehearsal. And of course, we knew nothing about it. So we were very resistant to go. But I'd say within the first few months of us being there, um, you couldn't keep us away. Uh, we, uh, we grew up on the north side of LA, up, up toward the Los Feliz area. And in the, that area at that time, there weren't many Asians. Um, so uh, being a member of the Corps really opened our eyes up to um, Chinese from other parts of the city. Uh, it gave us a good sense of uh, uh, Asian identity and, and a feeling of community with everybody we were involved with. Um, I started off in the horn line. They, they gave me a baritone horn, which I couldn't play at all. So of course, uh, if you can't play a horn, what do they do with you? They throw you in a drum line. So I played in a drum line for five years. Um, what else? I, I think, uh, my five years in the Corps, uh, like everybody else, gave me a, a, a sense of uh, 
identity. I, I grew to, to know myself better, uh, to be more involved with my community. Um, uh, the lifelong friendships, the uh, the discipline it took to um, try to be the, as as good a, a performer as I could be at the time, um, and that really carried me through my my adult life. In fact, uh, when my wife passed away 20 years ago, uh, I, I was out in Houston, Texas. I still am, um, and I was kind of a, at a loss of what to do with myself. And then I thought, well, what's what's the one thing in my life that really brought me a lot of uh, um, pride in myself, a lot of uh, uh, happiness, um, uh, a, a way to meet other people. And the only thing that I could come up with was, was drum corps. Uh, just the feelings that I had uh, and the pride that I had when I was doing it growing up. So I, I fortunately found a local drum and bugle corps uh, in the Houston area, and I've been uh, associated and performing with uh, other drum corps ever since. You mean as an adult you've been performing? Yes. Um, um, there are a, a, a few drum and bugle corps uh, in Texas uh, that I've been performing with, and I still do. Uh, I perform with the uh, uh, Hawthorne Caballeros Alumni Corps. Uh, the last time was four years ago. Uh, they're up in New Jersey. Um, I've gone to uh, DCA Drum Corps Championships up in the Northeast for several years. So it's, it's, it's really just a lifelong hobby. What, was there a, a drum instructor with the corps? Was there was there were there specialists like one person taught the horn and another taught drums? Well, yeah, every every, every section had their own instructors. Okay. Um, the main instructor that uh, uh, I had was was Bob Buck, who actually was. Uh, a member of the drum corps back in the earlier years, maybe uh, uh, Youngie can uh, expand upon that. There was Richard Kwan. Uh, we even had some instructors uh, who were from other drum corps. Um, I remember one one drum instructor we had, I, I can't remember his name offhand, but he actually marched with the Casper Troopers before he came to teach us. Uh, we also had, we also had, uh, a drum instructor from the Boston Crusaders for a year. Wow, that's. And uh, what what schools did you go to, by the way? What high school did you? Uh, go to? When I joined, I was going to uh, King Junior High, and then I went to John Marshall High School, and uh, Cal State LA, and I graduated from UCLA. Sounds like a, a wonderful journey. And now you're in the heart of Texas, where one of my cousins is. Uh, let me move on to Jeff, Jeff Eng. Uh, I know that one of your drums is in our uh, middle room at the Historical Society. So I see the name pop out at me uh, on a regular basis. So maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you played and uh, what schools you went to at the time? You know, when, how old were you when, when you joined? Uh, maybe uh, as, as we're asking of everybody, how how did that change your life, and how did did you make did it make you a, a better person? Jeff, buddy, I'm Jeff Ng, and today's Wednesday night. We should be at Broadway Bills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, celebrate. Anyway, Jeff Ng and drum corps was a big part of my life. Um, I marched from 74 to 77, always loved drumming. Uh, it was a great, great experience. And uh, I started off as a bass drummer in 74. I was kind of a pudgy little kid and end of the year, I was, I was skinny. So it was a great way to exercise and, and, and just make friends. I've learned teamwork, perseverance, just never giving up. All these life kind of life skills that I learned I've carried to my business. When did you first learn drums? 
I learned through drum corps. So I learned oh, okay. through Willie Polachek. And hopefully Willie's on, on online tonight, but Willie is still with us and he's still judging and he's still competitive. And I, he's been such a role model for me. I really, uh, I do credit him with teaching us kids how to play drums. And we had no skills coming in. And, uh, you know, it's been a joy. It's been drum corps has been kind of the best part of my highlight of my, of my childhood. And I still play drums to the day after I retired from Allstate. So it's been a great ride. And um, just to comment, so what kind of, you, you traveled uh, all over, what kind of cities or towns do you remember going to? Which we traveled to Seattle and Janice can help me. <laughs> Seattle, where do you go? Oregon, kind of off the Pacific Northwest, right? We saw the World's Fair and a lot of long bus rides, a lot of long, we're kind of like a family, like army buddies sleeping on gym floors. It, it kind of, drum corps taught us how to live through through 90 degree weather, through rainy weather, through marching through horse poop. We go, you, the show goes on. You just, you persevere through anything, all, all weather conditions, you never give up. And that's been kind of one of the ongoing traits that has helped me in life and in the business and family and just dealing with, dealing with life. So it's been Speaking great. Of walking through horse poop. So did did you participate in local parades in the Southland? Like in lots of parades, lots of hot parades. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, it was it was a great great experience. Oh, uh, so speaking of hot, then did you then march on some really hot days? You know, where I guess you're wearing a uniform and a cap. So. Most hot days, the uniform is silk and it's heavy, and it's and uh, yeah, it's it's it was uh, grueling, but it's fun. I mean, you're doing it with your buddies. You're all we're all grown up together. I was 12 years old when I joined, and uh, you know, it, it's 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 like being an army for kids. Yeah, and what schools did you go to? And by the way, what what did your I was going to say what. Uh, did your parents encourage you to go in? Uh, were you also in Chinese school like some of the others? No, my so my mom Betty Betty's online right now. Thank my mom for letting me join the court. And uh, my mom and George Wong's mom are are sisters. So George, Willie, Jimmy, Richard, and Margaret were all everybody's in drum court except Margaret, I believe. And Margaret should be online here too. But they were in charge of the heavily involved in drum court. And George was the quartermaster. And so they've always encouraged me to join. And when I was 12, that's when I joined. You were 12 also. OK. I, I'm just a bit, I, it didn't occur to me before that you know, I was thinking that most of you might have joined in high school. But obviously, you know, I, I just learned some, some things tonight You know that Wow, you know, this is this is a uh, uh, quite something to kind of uh, uh, move, you know, go from your home neighborhood, uh, whether it's East LA or North LA, Northeast or, or another neighborhood, to go in and, and gather together. So that must have been quite a. Uh, experience you know, feeling that you you belong someplace it was a great experience it got us out of the house we could travel the world we had no curfew <laughs> yeah no friends we, were, we kind of grew up together and yeah. to this day some of my closest friends are drum corps drum corps folks yeah you mentioned being in oregon so uh one of our board members is zooming in from portland right now so anyway hi angela Anyway, let me move on to the next person, and that would be Don Kwan. Uh, Don, I, I think you will have something to say. Uh, how old were you when you joined? What schools were you at? What did you play? You know, and how did uh, what did you gain from being involved? Well, I I went to Castellar Elementary School from K through fourth grade. And so I met a lot of the kids that lived in Chinatown. But after that, I moved 
to a, another area and went to Doris Place and um, Washington Irving Junior High School and then John Marshall. Uh, it was in uh, well, it was in well, Irving Junior High School that I joined the orchestra because I played drums and trumpet. And then at the same time, I joined the Los Angeles uh, Police Department Deputy Auxiliary Police Band called the DAP. But then they later, we later changed it to LAPD Boys Band. And that's where I met Bill. Bill, uh, when I joined, we were playing snare drum. He was, of course, the one with more experience. But a year, about a year after that, he said, hey, I'm forming a drum and bugle corps. Why don't you come down and, and, and see if you like it? And that probably was the beginning of, of one of my most memorable events, because when I finally did go down to the Chunghua uh, Chinese School, I met all these kids that I used to know in Castellar four years later. And so that, to me, was a great experience. But, you know, I've, I've loved music all my life. And so the music part uh, was very uh, exciting as well. Uh, drum corps being quite different than a band. Um, tell, us about the, tell us about the horn that you played. Was that hard to play? Well, let's see. If you listen to people who play horns, they say one of the most difficult horns to play is a French horn. Um, although uh, soprano, I played soprano bugle, and it's it has its difficulties too. But I think that that probably a French horn is more difficult. Um, were, were you close to Richard Kwan? So he, he came was... in. He came in about three years after me, I think. So, uh, I, in three years, I was I getting. I was just graduating from high school and getting ready for college. So, um, I didn't get to know Richard that well. Uh -huh. But his mother was involved, I guess. His mother was in as part. Of, was one of the active uh, people in the parents' auxiliary. Yeah, I, I mentioned his mother because Ella Ella Kwan was was basically den mother for the Chinese Historical Society in our <laughs> early years, and we we greatly miss her. Uh, you you mentioned Bill, and I think for the audience we should mention that that's Bill Lee. Maybe you can tell us uh, for take a moment to tell us about who he was. When I met Bill, uh, he was uh, he was very friendly, very outgoing. And I think hopefully a little bit of that rubbed off on me because I admired him. He's so outgoing and friendly. Um, there, he, was, he was pretty young, wasn't he? Yeah, okay. So when I think when I was in, in the LAPD boys band, he was just getting out of high school. Then he went to PCC. And then he decided that he was going to join the Marines. And so... Um, you know that Marine, when you join the Marines, is a boot camp. And so during that period of time, you're not allowed off the base. Well, he, of course, he still had the responsibility of drum corps. And so what happened during the times that he was in boot camp, some of us more senior people uh, sort of held up, held up our, our practice sessions. And it would start out with the sections, like the drum sections would go off with some a leader like John Hom, and then we had the horn sections, and they would divide up into smaller groups as well. And Frank, I think, was one of the leaders there. After the drums and the and the horns uh, finished their sessions, then we all got together and we did music and marching. And so that's the part that I led during the time that um, Bill was in boot camp. Well, but I gotta say that Bill is so so focused. I mean, he came out, I think he came out of Madison, Wisconsin, um, Boys, uh, Boy Scout Drum and Bugle Corps. I think he was playing tenor drum. And when he came to uh, Southern California, I think he joined, I know he joined Franklin, the music organization. He joined the LAPD Boys Band. I think that he might have joined the LA Times uh, Boys and Girls um, Youth Group. 
and and that's where Bill met him. So that's how Bill made his contacts with both John and me through these other youth group organizations. But he was very focused because he learned to play a horn. He learned he was doing well on the snares. And actually, uh, he was pretty good even twirling baton. So he had a cousin named Clark Ung who, was, who competed in uh, bat uh, baton twirling. But Bill was uh, involved even in that, as uh, you know, as far as teaching the kids how to play and march. And I am, I am trying to see if Clark Ung is in the audience today. But... I think he possibly passed, didn't he? Yeah, yeah I think he passed. Okay. Passed. Okay. But he is in the pictures that we have All right. from the 50s. Yeah. All right. And I had um, parts of my family that were in the core also was my sister, a Judy Kwan, and then my cousin, Irene Chung, and she was a majorette. And then my cousin, Gary Lee, who also played bugle. So that's what? Four other family members? Three, three others. Three others. One, okay. Two, four all together. Okay. So, so it's really a, a kind of a family thing. And, and your parents were involved too? My mother was involved in the parents' auxiliary, yes. Okay, let me move on to uh, Frank. Uh, do I see you, Frank? Sorry, oh, Eugene, oh, he, there... he, he, he's not here. He's not here, okay. Yeah, because uh, uh, Don mentioned that he was uh, also one of the leaders involved. Yes. Yeah. Old drum and bugle corps. Not one of them sit and talk about golf. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. So uh, maybe uh, Cliff, yeah. you you were involved. I know that you're not one of the featured uh, speakers here, but really, uh, you we all know that you were greatly involved. And there's some a few others in the audience here who uh, will want to speak up uh, a little bit later. But maybe Cliff. Uh, Tell us about your role. What, what, how were you involved? My involvement, I just wanted to be with uh, some of the younger kids. And my godfather, Randy Lee, and Craig Lee was, lived down the street from me. And they said, come on out and join. I said, no, I don't think so. But they drugged me out anyway. I joined, and the rest is history. Like uh, Janice said and some of the others. My niece in the Stanford. Life Lifelong friends, just included San Francisco, and uh, they were very much into competitive tennis. And okay. so, the girls and the guys, I'm not sure where that is coming from. Um, uh, where was I? So, my role yeah. I played the horn, uh, third soprano, had a great time. I love the traveling to the east coast, the camaraderie with uh with all the kids and being on my own, you know, and being chaperoned by parents. That's like the first time. Um, so, so maybe all, all we could jump in, but, you know, being involved with others, did you, did you uh, speak Chinese at all to, to each other? Uh, oh no, not me. <laughs> I'm, I'm half Japanese. So <laughs> unfortunately Chinese and Japanese in the household was not spoken. <laughs> yeah, and, and and your mom was uh, uh, very much involved, right? Uh, yes, uh, part of the parents' auxiliary, like most of the kids, uh, the parents got involved, hung out with Janice Lee's uh, Manis uh, parents, uh, June and my mom are good friends, uh, friends even after, outside of CORE, I think, as well as Tommy and her father, Janice's father, Tommy Lee, and my dad, they were friends outside of CORE as well, so the parents also formed their own friendships outside of core as well. And um, hopefully, you know, I, I don't, I, I'm trying to open up my chat, but uh, hopefully uh, some of you have been sending in questions or comments 
Uh, yeah, we did have a couple of questions. So um, yeah, I'd I like to welcome you. most yeah. of our people here look like um, alumni, drum corps alumni. Welcome everyone. But we have a couple of guests, uh, Will Jung, who says he's a uh, band leader on the East Coast and he had a question. And um, and also Dan Fong, thank you from the Mandarin um, who came down and to see the exhibits. Thank you, thank you for being here. So Will was asking, um, and Eugene, this would kind of impact you. You said you couldn't be a member of the drum corps because you were busy working at your parents' store. Um, so yeah. Will was asking whether or not there, any of the panelists had gotten backlash from their parents for choosing music over business, uh, you know, that our parents really wanted the best for us. So um, rather than going to music, um, instead of studying, did did anybody get any pushback from their parents for that on the panel? Or, or were you encouraged to just be part of this group? I, I do know that some people were not able to remain in the drum corps because their parents thought they were spending too much time um, at practice instead of studying. Yeah. But I don't know if the experience of anybody on the panel um, we're similar. I, I think most of you live pretty close by. At least, you know, even East LA is not that far. Um, we were too far south and out of the area. But maybe uh, some comments from. So, oh, now I just found the the chat. Okay, my apologies. I'm techni technology challenged. Uh, as, as as difficult as it was, there's some cases where. Uh, there were a lot of things going on. Uh, for example, uh, Young Lee talked about having to work at the restaurant and um, you probably had to share time with um, drum corps because restaurants usually are busy on Friday, Saturday, and maybe Sunday. Um, and then of course we had the studies. And so I think it became a, a situation of where you had to manage good time, uh, have good time management and try, just try to make use of all your time that you could. I think um, one, one other thing, you know, I know our time is short. Um, we kind of talked about the parents auxiliary and also Eugene had asked in earlier sessions what the drum corps role was in the community. And so I kind of call it the East, uh, East meets West. So at the time, you know, when um, we were most active, I think, um, there there was a period in our society, you know, where the Asians were looking for their roles in the society. So I would like to turn it to Janice to kind of uh, do a little bit of reminiscing about how East met West at our drum corps shows. Yes, well, we were talking about um, the drum corps had uh, our competition every year. It was called Oriental Odyssey. And during that show, it was a little bit unique, different from all of the other core competitions that uh, other cores had, because we would serve Asian food. We had chow mein, and this is where, you know, our parents really pitched in and did so much work in the cooking of all of the, the food. Um, I'm, I don't remember everything that we had. I just, I definitely remember we had chow, chow mein, um, egg rolls, I think. Um, but we also did very unique um, trophies. I remember my dad making a Buddha and he purchased the wooden Buddha and then he actually put it on a platform and then they made the plates. So a lot of the cores were very, um, excited to receive the trophies that we gave away. And then on top of that, for our um, uh, halftime shows, we had Polynesian dancers and they were actually members that were in the core too. They were actually Polynesian dancers. And um, I think I don't, we might've had the lion dance too, but we always try to carry an Asian theme in the Oriental Odyssey. So it was quite a show and, you know, people really looked forward to it. So, but the parents, I mean, uh, I, I don't think I can say enough for uh, the amount of work and planning that the parents did for us. 
um, the events that they had for us. And they even on top of that did social events. We had an annual picnic that we would do where they planned games and it was just, you know, a lot of, of fun. And I mean, I realized that as my two daughters uh, were in color guard and I found how much work it was to, you know, be a booster and help raise money for when they had their competitions. And, you know, so it was kind of, it was a learning experience for me realizing how much mom and dad really did, you know, they dedicated so much time to it. Thank goodness. Yeah. Eugene, you're muted. Sorry. Yeah. No, I, I mentioned Ella Kwan earlier, and of course, you know, we all know that she had a, a, an important role, but of course, Richard uh, developed the, uh, her son Richard uh, developed the leadership skills to become a, a, a band director and a music instructor. And uh, I know that every uh, New Year at the Rose Parade, we would see him leading the All City Yes, schools ban, and uh, that that was always in, impressive. I mean, to see the group, but then to well, we, we know it might be like herding cats, but you know, for 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 somebody to to pull all a, a large contingent like that is is pretty amazing. But maybe he had practice working with all of you guys. <laughs> you know, maybe that was like herding cats sometimes too. But but I mean, yeah. You all, you know, sound like really responsible people. So I, I, I know I can tell why you succeeded. Why? Oh, by the way, so for for those who have not visited and seen the uh, Imperial Dragons Room at the Historical Society, there is a nice display that some of the uh, folks on this that you see on the screen uh, helped put together. Uh, there are trophies and there are some of the uh, uniforms and the, uh, uh, they're not helmets. What are they called? Uh, caps? Shakos. Shakos. Okay. I know there's a name for it. And as well as uh, Jeff Eng's drum and another set of drums and a couple of horns. So there, there is a, and plus a lot of good narrative that tells about the um, the uh, the group, and thanks also to a generous donation from the Drum and Bugle Corps. Uh, we are putting together. We have put together um, a narrative for our website, which will tell a little bit about the history and of the uh, Drum and Bugle Corps. So we appreciate to all of you and all the members for for your generosity and helping with our, our displays. Um, let's see. Eugene? Yeah. Could I get uh, one real quick? I know we're almost sure. out of time, but yeah. could I get Jeff Ng to hold up that truck? To mod you got a model of the truck real quick. Happy to do it. Here is the masterpiece right here. So oh, nice. Backstory is, so everybody knows George Wong was the quartermaster. And so Jimmy, his younger brother, built this truck, hand-built this in the 70s, and it's pretty much an exact replica of the road truck. And it's fully customized. Um, I want to thank my friend Danny Wong. <laughs> Danny's out there. Danny helped me put this together. Um, thanks to Margaret. Margaret George's sister, she gave it to me at the reunion, and it was in pieces. And I told Danny two days ago, I said, hey, I need that truck back. <laughs> and he put it together for me. And it's it's in work in progress, but it looks pretty good. And it's amazing that, that George, that Jimmy could hand paint these letters on here. Exact replica of the road truck. And I used to write to practice in this truck in the back, in the back, the blue part. Me and Damon Wong, which is another another core member, and we'd write back to their like illegal aliens and come out of practice. We don't know where we're going, 
We're locked in there. Don't know where. It's totally illegal. Later on, we got to write on the front part. We graduated, so we got to write in the front. And George, being a, such an innovator, he used to, he planned for us. He said, if you ever got a heart attack, he told me to take the steering wheel and Damon would do the pedals and we to drive the truck in case in case he had a heart attack and couldn't drive the truck. Thanks, so that's Jeff. George, the innovator. That's beautiful. Beautiful. So that's it. Wow. It, I liked Tonka my Tonka trucks when I was a kid. But uh you know, there, there's actually more comments in the chat than I think I, we can handle. But uh, we have, uh, or uh, Janice or Linda, do you see some comments that we think we should pick out? Well, I think I'm hoping that um, these comments will also be recorded. I'm, I think I was a little slow on trying to copy it to a Word document, but mostly they're good re re uh, memories of people who are online of their own experiences in the drum corps. Um, and, you know, we are going to do follow on to this online, um, it, it's called a site map, which is kind of an online exhibition of, of what the, it's a version of, of the physical exhibition that's in the, at the Chinese Historical Society. And we'll still be working on it um, after this presentation. Um, there's still more revisions we'll be making, some additions. So um, we'll keep your comments and hopefully be able to integrate them into this uh, story that we want to leave as our legacy. Yeah. Um, I've saved I, the comments. So yeah. Hopefully. So I think, the, I think everybody was sent the link when you signed up for, or when you received the uh, information to sign up for this event, um, there was a link to the site map. So please go and, and take a look. I think you'll really enjoy it. And if you have any comments to be sure to get back to Clifford, me or Don Quan, and we'll try and integrate things in as we see them. Um, we just really appreciate that the Chinese Historical Society took us on, you know, when we first proposed the physical exhibition because, um, you know, we had pitched it in, in another place and they didn't want to take us on. And yeah. uh, the yeah. society's just been really great. So please go and support the Chinese Historical Society. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, I think, yeah, and, and I also want to make one comment too. You know, we talk about um, our in-house support of, uh, you know, like Greg and and uh, Young Yi and, you know, Frank, who's not here, who, who became our instructors, they stayed on. So there was something that Drum Corps brought to them that they were dedicated enough to stay on as our instructors. And we did bring in, uh, I know Eugene doesn't know this, but we did hire instructors from outside and they became part of our family as well. But as a Drum Corps, um, you you had asked us, Eugene, about our community involvement and, and it did take a community to support the Corps. So when you look back at our letterhead for uh, you know, the drum corps, um, the parents took care of all the correspondence and things, but to see the names of people like in the banking industry who were part of the board of directors. And I know there was one woman who was very, very generous. She was um, helped support the core. And then people like Bill Hong of Hong Kong Lo, um, people in the community, the restaurant industry who helped support us. And um, one thing like Bill, Bill Hong, when we did our carnivals, at the end of the nights, he would we would count the money up in at um, Hong Kong Lo, and he would feed us too. So it was people like that that helped the drum corps sustain over the years. Um, and like one of the one of the quotes we used was, you know, the parents auxiliary they made it so all of the kids had to do was to do music, and um, and enjoy the experience. But, you know, it was definitely the parents. And I think maybe for the for the people here who I, I did not have children, but for those of you who did, I I only just marveled that people gave up their vacation time to chaperone us. So those of you who have children, I, I perhaps that was your experience as well, that as your kids were growing up, that you gave up yourself the same way that our parents gave to us. So that that's kind of my closing comment. Yeah, it's, it's sort of interesting that that while you organized and, and got together as a group, you know, you would think that you were really doing it for yourselves, but basically you were 
really doing it for the community and, and maybe you felt prouder and you know help develop your your own identity as a chinese american or asian american or and uh, or as a community person so uh, what we hope to do is to as mentioned we'll, we'll develop a uh, a story map a uh, a uh, online story and uh, we hope to continue recording these stories the stories keep coming in actually uh, one day uh jeff uh, uh, danny wong came in and he said oh yeah that's my drum and so i i we, we chatted a bit and i said oh yeah you know what what did your uh, what did your your father do and he said oh my dad owned the the v market in la and i said no that was my father's store <laughs> and we learned that he had his father had actually bought my dad's grocery store in the 1950s and it's just amazing that when you can have a chat with somebody who just kind of comes in off the street who really you really don't know and you find all of these connections that we have uh, so anyway I, I just want to thank all of you for sharing your stories um there's a, a just so much more that we can do and we hope to carry the, the legacy forward uh, what we'll do is it's a little bit past the time and our president had told me we have to stop at 10 but uh, I've gone over a little bit uh, we have a, a short PowerPoint that or, or actually with audio that Cliff you can play and then right after that Susan Dixon will come on with um upcoming with a little bit of information about upcoming programs so i hope all of you can i hope to see all of you again sometime cliff i want you start the the uh, little powerpoint okay thank you eugene i appreciate it uh hopefully we won't have any technical difficulties but let's give it a go Thank, Thank you. Cliff. Back to you, Eugene. Thank you, and a big hand to all of you. I hope the audience can do the same thing. Uh, now I turn the mic over to Susan Dixon, our board member and past president. Susan? Hi, I want to thank you for all your dedication through the years and uh, for sharing your stories with us. I want to invite everybody to come back next month on March 6th at 7 o'clock, we have Su, Su Yen Zhu, and she, uh, she and her um, 
nephew have written Asparagus Opera, a Chinese family in San Fernando Valley. So it's a story of um, a farming community in the San Fernando Valley and uh, multi-generational, and I think you will enjoy it. But also there's something else that's going to be happening on the 15th of this month at Union Station, if you've not had the opportunity to see the uh, Where You Stand exhibit, Chinatown from uh, Chinatown 1888 to 1938. It was a collaborative effort between the Chinese Historical Society, uh, ICW, Institute of California in the West and Metro. It's at Union Station at five o'clock. They'll have East Wind to kind of, for the new year, they will have people that will take you around to see, because this exhibit is about old Chinatown. I mean, Eugene was uh, a driving force behind the history on it and getting that history right. It's uh, It actually now has augmented reality that it didn't have when I last saw it. And then please use your QR codes to listen to uh, brief uh, segments of people remembering old Chinatown as part of our Save our, um, Southern California Oral History Project that we did with UCLA. And it's nice that those things are preserved. And that's what we're doing now uh, with the Drum and Bugle Corps is preserving history. So I hope you do go online and see the entire story map because it's uh, multimedia. It also has sound, it has video, as well as it has the story. So please join us again in the future, first Wednesday of um, every month, seven o'clock. So hope to see you soon. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Good night, everyone.